Hello there. All right, so in today's video, we'll be talking about tables. And what tables allow us to do is to dynamically call functions. So previously, um, I think about two videos ago, I introduced you to the call keyword, and we could say uh, call function one, and that would just call function one. But what if we don't know which function specifically we want to call? So what if we want to decide in, during runtime which function to call? So that will, that's what tables allow us to do. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so as usual, um, I've created the JS file, which just fetches uh, WASM, does all the stuff that we usually do, and then I get our exports. And then I have an HTML file, which is just a head calling our script. Okay, and now I have an empty what file with just the module wrapper. So this video is going to have a lot of um, syntax, but don't be scared. I mean, if you've made it this far, I don't think you'll be scared by anything, but anyway. Define a table, we say table, and first thing we do is we specify its size. So we'll say it's a size of two, and in this table we'll be storing function references. Um, another keyword you could use is any func and it will work just the same. It's just saying that it's functions of any signature. Okay. Um, now another keyword is lm, since for element, and we'll say i32 const zero. What this is saying is that we want to initiate, just like in the hello world video in which you use the data element, which we instantiated bytes in linear memory, this will allow us to instantiate, I'm not sure if instantiate is the right word, but anyway, um, will allow us to populate tables with functions. So over here I'll just say f1 and f2, and let's create these two functions. And yeah, we have our table created. It's of size 2. This is our offset, so we don't have any offset. If we had an offset of 1, this table should be 3. Um, what else? We're creating the two functions, and yeah. Um, just like we could create memory in JavaScript, we can also create uh, tables in JavaScript. You can just say let table, let's call the WebAssembly API, we'll say table. And in here you create an object saying that our initial size will be 2 and it will have an element of func ref. Okay. Now in here, the same way that you um, to uh, obtain the same result that we have here, we can just say table.set, we'll set an element at 0, and then here we will have an f1. So f1 could be an imported or yeah, an imported function from what into here, and then we could say just uh, table set f2 at one. So in here we'll have the same result, and these are just imported functions. These two are just imported functions from what? Okay. Uh, now that we're here talking about JS, another important thing is tables are also mutable, so. I could also just change whatever my one is later. I could say table set one and then set it to an F3. Um, I can also grow my table, say grow one. Um, and I can also get my table dot length by saying table. I can also get my table length by saying table dot length. So this is the JS API for tables. Now let's actually call a table not a table, a function in a table. Um, to do that, it's not the best, but just, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll code it first and then I'll commentate over it. All right, so there's a lot to unpack here, so let's go by steps. Um, before I comment over this, in here, I'm creating a function. I'm exporting it by call by index. So you can tell that this is what we'll use to call by index. 
uh, we'll say something like um, in our exports, we'll say exports dot um, call by index zero, and this should output one. Okay, so that's our goal. And here I'm getting our param, so this will be the zero, and we're putting it in the stack. Call indirect is the only way that we can use to interact with tables. So we'll be indirectly calling what's in the stack at zero, which in this case will be this function. And sorry, let's let's say that again. We're putting zero in the stack, and we're indirectly calling a function at index zero. So it's pulling implicitly pulling this from the stack and calling the function um, at index zero, which in this case is f1. Okay, well that's better. Now, why do we have type and what even is a type? So you probably guess type is a type and we're using this for type checking. As you know, WebAssembly is type checked and what this is doing is we're creating a type called result i32 and this type is going to be a function that, well, results i32. Um, yeah, so in, for example, in here we have all our functions being i32s but if this was an F F32, and this was an F32, and in here we said result F32, and call indirect called this function, we would get an error because the types don't match. Okay, so this is for type checking sake. All right, now that we have this set up, um, let's actually run it. So back in JS, right here we have it all ready, and as I said, we just want to do, let's console log it, or let's document all right. Document all right, and we'll say exports dot call by index, and we'll call it index zero. So in our HTML, we should just see one. Okay, in here, let's start. Oh, that's actually what's wasm. We got our table wasm. And let's start a Python server. It's running. Let's go to Google Chrome. Localhost 8000. And we don't get anything. Did we get any errors? Oh, my table example. Okay. This should have, this should have had a, a new keyword. But anyway, we don't we don't even we're not even using this. So let's just um, go back here, reload, and we get one. So, one, yeah, yay. Okay, so I think we've reached the end of this high level overview of WebAssembly text format. And I'm saying high level because there's still a lot that I could cover. For example, um, even in relation to tables and memory, something we, I could have talked about is um, dynamic linking. So you, something you could do is you could create uh, memory and tables, uh, memory and a table instance in JavaScript, import it to multiple WebAssembly modules, and then just uh, make them make all the WebAssembly modules interact between one another. Um, other than that, there's also um, control flow. You can branch, you can loop, all this sort of stuff. You can you can also do in WebAssembly, and I haven't really gone over it, gone over it, but. And so this is what I mean, just a high level overview. I could still go over these topics if you'd like me to. Um, just comment down below and I'll make I'll, I'll make sure to address them. Um, but yeah, so this is the end. And hopefully from this now we'll be transitioning on to making um, Rust applications and then transitioning them to WebAssembly. Well, so yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for joining the ride. In celebration, I'm wearing my WebAssembly shirt. And yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.